Hello world, how are you all doing? I hope all you're all doing great and welcome to another stream. And um, yeah, this is, I haven't been around last week uh, because as I told you in the last stream, I'm really, really busy currently preparing for a three month Japan trip and I'm really excited for this and there was a lot of things to, to work through and we have already booked a lot of, um, you know, a lot of hotels and stays and the flight and we planned like a trip there and there's still a lot of more things to do and prepare so i am really really busy welcome to stream mr soyek how are you doing and i've really really been busy so i couldn't stream last week uh, but i am around today and this stream is also going to be a shorter one also this is not going to be on the, um, the open focus timer like we usually do instead we will um, today focus on body crouch so um, this is like basically the open source tool that I have, I think I have written 2016 that helps translate apps. And based on that, I developed this new app, RimaFox, which is basically a UI for this and with lots of more features. And I have also I have been busy because I am preparing the release of RimaFox right now. And it is scheduled to be released by October 11th, as you can see here, which is Tuesday next week. So I'm really, really busy with that as well, but everything is ready, I believe. So the, the app is already on the store and actually, and this is also, the, you're, you're the first people hearing this. Actually, it's already on the store and you can check it out. It's here. So let me share the link in, in, the, um, in the chat. So if you wanna check it out for yourself, feel free to do that. And what you will see when you open that is basically, uh, um, it's going to be released on October 11th, but you can see a um, coming soon page where, where you can already um, basically um, pre-order the app, which is uh, obviously it's free. So you can absolutely download it for free. It's freemium. So you can use it for free entirely forever. There's a lot of features um, that are for free. And I'm excited about this. So you can check out now the entire description of this app. I'm not going to go through this all, but if you want to check this out, it's now ready and it's scheduled to be released October 11th. And I'm working hard on producing some videos to explain and make it even easier to use the app. Although the app already tries to be easy. I mean, easy is in its name. It's trying to make localization of apps easy. And um, yeah, yeah, there's also videos here. Maybe we can go through those. So um, they are not uh, with audio, so I can just play them here where you can basically see what the app is doing. So in this uh, video, we're going to, going to see the what you've seen already here in the stream. I'm adding some code here as an example, and this text needs to be localized, so I mark it. Then I do the shortcut, and this opens our ad translation view in the RimaFox app where I can just add the key here. I press command M to machine translate and you'll see that it automatically translated to all the languages that my app supports. And then I just press insert as string and I even have a safe reference to an enum. So that's that's basically the first video, what this is about, but I presented this already before. Anyhow, this is basically the, the official reveal of it. The next video, it shows basically how you can lint strings files where linting means checking for issues and you can see there are empty values and duplicate keys found here and you can open the file directly from there and you see there is an empty uh, string there and you can also machine translate uh, afterwards by just pressing this button and this now translates everything that was empty it shows you a summary of what was translated into which languages what the source language was and now you can see the new translation is there so this is the second video and the third video basically shows you how to set up a project. So let's have a look at that as well. So you just go into set up new project, you drag and drop your project into the project setup analyzes. You press continue, then you get some instructions that you should read through when you do this, not in the video. And then it just goes through the configuration file where you can customize a lot of aspects. And you don't need to customize anything. The defaults are pretty good. But um, if you want to customize things because you have special style of doing things, you can do that as well. And here are the screenshots. So you can see there's a project browser where you can browse through your projects and create new projects. The configuration file with all the customization options, a linter and a normalizer. The normalizer can also, for example, sort your keys alphabetically. So they're easier to find, things like that. 
and the machine translation as already shown in the um, video and the pro workflow of adding new keys without ever leaving your Swift file. So this is basically the main feature of the, this app and it produces and um, the whole app produces an enum so you can safely reference your translations from code. Um, that prevents like typos, for example, you, you can't have typos, the compiler will just tell you, hey, this doesn't compile. And also you will get auto completion. So it's really, really cool thing. And yeah, check it out. So this is my um, new app uh, available on October 11th. And um, it's ready for pre order. And I'm really looking forward to, to your feedback, so make sure to also provide feedback. I already have the app installed, so you can see this is the spoiler here. You can see you can also choose your plan on first. This is the first time I'm starting the final app, so this is the downloaded app. And you can see it's it's freemium. It's not free. I already told you this. It's not uh, free for pros and for um, larger companies. There are um, tires that they need to pay. And that's how I'm going to make money. I mean, I'm an indie developer. I have to get my money somehow. But there is a pretty good free tire where you can get up to 200 text blocks, which means 200 keys. So you can translate up to 200 places in your app and up to 10 languages, which is, I think, pretty good. So you can choose like the best, the, the most spoken languages and you should have a pretty good coverage, actually. And it also doesn't support pluralization, but that's already something that's more for pros. And I even added some explanation here what pluralization is, because most people don't even know what that is. It's basically when you um, need to count things. For example, when you have a text where you have like um, a number and then a, a text where you count that thing. For example, one user, two users, three users, right? In, in English, it, there you have two cases. And in other languages, there's even more cases. For example, in Arabic, there is like a case for when you have zero things, a case for when you have one thing, or when you have two things, when you have three things, when you have 10 things, there are different cases and you enumerate them differently and that's called pluralization. And you can manage that with uh, the string sticked file support by Apple and it's supported in the in the upper tires but as, as a beginner I think you should stay with um, stay away from polarization anyways and 10 languages I think should be fine and I, I also uh, looked at a lot of open source uh, projects how many keys they have and things like that and I found that uh, 200 is like half of the projects I found is below 200 and half is above that's more or less what I found so I think uh, for starters this should be pretty pretty fine and that was the goal for the free plan because I still want all of you who are just starting out who uh, just maybe have a side project or something like that to be able to use Remafox completely for free and you can do that so um, this is going to be uh, the case and you can see open focus timer for example if we open this up it's using two languages and there is a small bug there it's not updating and 60 text blocks and um, yeah it's pretty much in, in within this um, tier and that should be fine so this is the app I've already shown in this app to you and you can also uh, find a lot of um, links here which are really useful uh, for example for reporting bugs requesting more features I'm going to add things over time and there's also a roadmap which you can go through where I add like what I'm planning to do on the next three months and I plan to make like one uh, up a feature update per month so for example for October I'm doing the obvious thing I want to support Ventura which is a feature so I need to implement that then on November, I'm planning to make sure that um, open source tools can use a pro tire for free. So for open source projects, which are basically not for profit, but is for the community and things like that, I think it makes sense to make the pro tier uh, for, uh, free for every developer there. And I have to implement this because it's, it's a, bit, a bit tricky to check that. But even that uh, is the next feature. But starting December, also these are small things. Why are those small features? Because I'm going to be in Japan, I'm going to be on travel, and I won't have much time to add big features um, the next three months. So that's why the next three months I have only small features. And uh, on December, I'm going to add two more translation services. Currently, Microsoft Translator is supported and DeepL Translator are supported which already covers pretty many, uh, pretty much any language that you might want to translate to. But I'm going to add Google Translate and Yandex as well, which were, uh, Yandex specifically was requested and I think it makes sense to also add Google Translate because it's so well known. And uh, yeah, that's that's the roadmap. And there's a lot of more things to discover. I'm going to produce links and produce videos on my YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure to do that. Uh, you can find it here. Let me send you a link again. 
because I'm going to post those videos on this channel and um, how to use the app, how to make use of the app, what best practices there are and things like that. I'm going to cover all of that thing. And also I'm planning to produce some content in Japan it's going to be development related, but also has like trying to have some Japan background. So you, you, you basically travel with me and uh, maybe it will be simply uh, work um, videos where I just work and you have some nice Japan background. So let's see if I can um, do that. But uh, I want to upload it to YouTube as well. And it's going to be its own playlist. So definitely make sure to subscribe on YouTube if you don't want to miss that. But that was a lot of talk and um, I'm really excited about things and Rima Fox uh, release is really really close and um, yeah I hope you're going to like it. There was also one other news which is I wrote the new issue of the Swift Evolution Monthly so if you want to check that out you can do that either on Medium or on my website flying.dev but on Medium um, yeah you can it looks like this and I go through uh, what's new what's going to come new uh, recently uh, soon in Swift and what was discussed and things like that. All right, by the way, I'm always active on Twitter. So some Swift tips, for example, today I shared something about how the Swift UI adoption is growing within Apple's own apps and frameworks. And you can see it's doubling like every, like this orange one is for Swift UI. The, the other one, the reddish one is for Swift and Swift is actually uh, growing really fast in the year of last year. So you can see also how Swift UI is growing and I'm always sharing tips like that. Mr. Soik, on Twitter, this is what you wrote in reply to. If you are starting to learn iOS development, you can spend 75 of time. Yeah, okay, I remember that. I remember my reply. Do you think it's possible to become a senior developer within three years? Okay, so um, yeah, maybe I can I can show this tweet. I think it should be here within tweets and replies. So thank you for the question, uh, Mr. Soyak. How far are you in? Like, um, I'm curious because maybe I can give you an answer that helps you more. Um, what's your, like, how long are you developing uh, in, in Swift? That would be uh, useful to know to give you a proper answer there. So let me try to find this so everybody knows what we're talking about. Uh, what was it? Three years, right? There we go. So the, the post from Azam, uh, from Mohammed Azam was, if you are starting to learn iOS development, you can spend 75% uh, of time learning Swift UI and 25% learning UI kit. And I answered, if you're starting today, you'll be a senior in about three years from now. So don't you think UI kit will become pretty much unused by then? Uh, so my point was, you should really focus on Swift UI mostly. One year. All right. And I developed my app, Rima Fox app, fully in Swift UI, except for window management, uh, which is now available in Swift UI 4. So even um, like with the current Ventura release that is going to be released, I think in a couple of weeks, or maybe in a week or so, um, I will be able to fully even get rid of the window management within Rima Fox that I currently use AppKit for, but then I can even use Swift UI for that. And um, yeah, I also have some NS workspace costs. That's when, for example, in, in the app here, when I um, say like, uh, when I click this, which just opens the website of RimaFox, which is currently incomplete, as you can see, that's one of the things I need to work on before um, release. Um, those things are actually uh, still in um, AppKit, and I'm not sure if they're going to provide a alternative in SwiftUI for that, because that's not really UI related, right? It's just a link. But to answer your question, and uh, why I wrote three years here is because in general, if you're working in a company, and you're working, for example, you're in an app development company and you're working there for three years. From my experience, that means um, people are going to see you more as someone who's already experienced. And you can basically say, I'm a senior if you have developed three years and you within the three years, you always improved and improved. But that means that when you when you start at the beginning, you're already a iOS developer. And you're a junior, obviously, but if you um, learn throughout the three years and just apply and write apps and all the time, I think it's pretty, uh, pretty common to be a senior after three years. But of course, it depends on what you do, what you define as a senior, and it's it's a def definition question in the end. In my in my eyes, I think everybody who's uh, who can basically develop any app that you you might think about, 
that is not too low level. I think everybody who can do that is a senior. And I think if you develop apps for three years and you're not working on only app in this three years, but also multiple apps, I think you're going to be there where you can basically develop anything you can, you can think of. And for me, that's a senior. And um, that's also, I think, why I, I uh, say three years here. Obviously, with the more you have experience you have, the more senior you're going to be and the more you're going to be uh, knowing things about app architecture and really advanced topics. But I don't think that advanced topics um, are only like, like you need to know every advanced topic to, to be a senior. I don't think that that's the case. And you can to be, you can totally become a senior within three years. Yeah, so if you're doing Swift Development for one year, are you doing this full time? Uh, are you like making money with it? Are you working for a company, um, Mr. Soyek? Um, because if that's the case, I think you're already within those three years. Just make sure to continue learning. Then in, a, in two years or so, I think you will be able to pretty much do any any project you could think of. And then, um, yeah, I would consider you a senior to answer that question. I hope it answered it. All right, but I want to get um, to the topic of this. Your answer is sufficient. Thank you. Yeah, cool. And the topic we're going to uh, be working on today is uh, body crouch. So let's go actually to the body crouch repository. And body crouch is um, the tool that um, helps you translate your apps. And um, there are two things that are currently in progress. One of them, I think we can't tackle um, today because it's basically about, um, about the uh, new release and I actually made a new release for 12.1 on Homebrew, but somehow I think it's still not merged. There is some issue with Swift syntax and I've already reported it to Swift even and to Apple even. Somebody from the Apple Swift syntax team actually um, um, even messaged me and said like, hey, I can help you if you like create an issue and I did that. So uh, I hope it's going to work out and uh, I can also show you that. It's Apple Swift syntax, there you go. Uh, it's a, a Hoppen, by the way. So Alex um, Hoppen, I think, is its name. And uh, I basically created an issue here, which should be in here somewhere. Uh, one closed, there you oh. Children, oh no, that's uh, an old one that I created. Did I create it in the wrong repo? Swift syntax. I think it's, it's in here, it should be in here. Uh, other, can I say jihad here? All right, I don't know why it's not uh, appearing here. Maybe, I, mean, I don't, really don't remember. Should actually be here. Anyways, um, uh, the, the, the point is that the, the release for with Xcode 14 compatibility, it's currently um, in process. And I hope that the issue with Swift syntax will work out fine. I'm totally still going to update Body Crouch and maintain it. So everybody who's depending on it will uh, be able to continue depending on it. Even though I have like a replacement with with uh, Body, uh, with Remafox now, I am also going to add like hint that you can switch to Remafox now. But I can totally understand if people want to stay on an open source tool and maybe they are using it for years now. It's 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 available since 2016, so it's six years old. It's pretty old actually. And um, yeah, and there was a bug report which I think we should tackle because it seems like I think it was this one here. Yeah, that they say that uh, one of the um, features here, one of the um, options that we provide, which is called override comments. So if I search for it here, oops, override comments. There you go. You can say override comments and you can set it to true. And I will make sure that anytime um, there is a uh, update code. I think there is a change in the translation of the English um, of, of the source. It basically copies that to the comments. I believe that's what it does or what it used to do. And they say that it doesn't do anything anymore. So let's read the, through this. Um, the override comment that doesn't seem to work anymore. I can only get the comments to change in my localized strings file if I first manually delete the comment from the strings file before running body crash update. All right. I've tested it on macOS 13 beta. Okay. 
using body crash for 11 and my body crash timer looks like this all right we have it available that's great and then the output is also there i'm using a macbook air okay not sure if relevant but the normalized task doesn't seem to output anything after dot 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 the normalized task uh, i think that's fine i think if normalized only outputs in specific i, I think it should be fine that shouldn't mean anything. All right, I also said thank you for providing all these details. I might um, have a take a look at this in my next open source stream, which is currently happening. Um, yeah, if you find me, uh, yeah. So if you're around, um, I think it was Noah. Noah Nubling. If you're around right now, feel free to message me and maybe you're, you're going to see and you can maybe answer some questions if you're not around maybe you're going to watch this later i hope it's going to be helpful i'm going to try to fix this now or uh, let's first reproduce it so let's have a look at this and i already have body crouch downloaded here let's just open it i think i already have xcode open as well great all right let's first check if everything is building uh, locally here just so we can see if we can actually reproduce things So we're waiting for the build. And uh, by the way, as soon as I fix one uh, one um, issue, I think I'm going to end the stream today because uh, as I said, where I'm going to Japan, there's still a lot of things to prepare. And uh, yeah, I don't wanna um, uh, invest too much time into the open source stream right before we're going to Japan, but I'm going to try streaming in Japan as well. We're going to be um, in um, places for a longer time, a period of time uh, for most of the time, but for some time we're going to also travel. But for the time we're in, in like staying in places, I'm going to try to stream there. So let's see if that's going to work out. I can't promise anything though because you never know how, how things go and then, yeah. People expect things and then you get unhappy, so let's not expect too much, but it seems to be building. And now I wanna run this. Um, and to make sure, oops, to make sure when we run the command line tool that we also do something uh, relevant, we can pass here um, arguments on, on launch so we can directly run a specific command. And the report said that they uh, ran the update command. And you can see the update command and we're also providing a uh, path here. So we can actually provide a path uh, with some action, uh, with some example project. And let, let me actually move things around. So they did not provide an example project, did they? I am working on the, of the Mac mouse. Oh, they are. Okay, great. Oh, nice. This is this is then uh, an open source repository. I can simply download it. Let's get to now. Now uh, we should be able to simply provide the path to here. And do we have the body crouch? Yeah, we have the toml file here as well. I'm assuming that everything is set up as it should be. Um, I think they mentioned a specific branch. I'm working on the version free branch. All right. Yeah, it's the version free branch. Perfect. And the, where's the all right? Okay, I think it's not enabled here. All right, comments, update code. Yeah, it's not enabled here, but let's enable it. Let's also read what, what, what is um, described this um, option does in the documentation so we don't change the behavior. So we have the update and we have the different options, which is update code and for code we have these options. And the override, or is it? There is no, oh, maybe that's the problem. I don't see it documented here. Uh, override comments option doesn't work. I can only get the comments to change my local file. If I first manually delete the comment from the settings file before running Barcrap, test it in Barcrap, and I think that's the override, right? There's no other overrides. Yeah. 
I don't see documented. All right, Thomas, let me search. Let me open all the options. I think we do have it somewhere. Nope, it doesn't find it. All right, let me search the entire repository. And I have to sign in for that. Why am I never signed in? This is so weird. All right, I hope it's going to work without you seeing anything, but just to be sure, let's get to the stream one. All right. Just signing in to GitHub. Two-factor is activated as well. Should be pretty safe. Great, we're signed in now. And uh, let's make this a bit bigger. Uh, what do I want to do? Uh, I want to search uh, for override comments within the repository. So we have two issues and four times mentioned in the code. This, this code is out, commented out. And we can see that the command line actor has an override comments option. The code task handler always sets it to false. All right, I think I, I know what's happening here. Hmm. Okay, so we do have the override comments in the task handler, code task handler. Um, no, um, I started wrong. We do have the override comments option in the command line actor, which is basically um, the logic where, where things happen. And then we have the task handlers where um, for the code task handler, the override comments option is always set to false. I believe this means that this uh, feature is simply not implemented and that it was never implemented. I don't see how this implemented, but let's have a look at maybe the history of this line. So if we go to git blame, we can scroll down to the place where this option is and see when it was last changed. You can see it was last changed. Uh, okay, I was just applying some Swift formatting here. Let's go to the history um, of this file. Restructure packages to have some extra configuration library. Make the ignore keys from translated config field configurable. Yeah, ignore keys. All right. Let's just get to a very old version of this file. All right, here it was not even implemented. And over our comments, we'll set to false a very long time ago. This is December 2018. Uh, but I believe this file was uh, part of a refactoring of this app, of this tool. But I also don't see it documented anywhere. So it's not in the documentation, the override comments. Is it? Not here? No, it's just in the code. Doesn't work. Comments are not being updated with code option. What do they say here? This is from 2016. Thank you for the feature request. I just, yeah, this is a feature request. I just made an attempt to implement this and release a new version. Please upgrade Barty Crouch. Okay, and use the option override comments. Also documentary, I hope it works. I haven't had the time to test it myself, but it might work. Please reappoint the issue if it doesn't. Working great. I posted a PR with small update, which made comments working for me. Uh, no problem, tests added, all right, all right. So this was, uh, oh, Noah had already said things here. Uh, this is from August, so this is also pretty new. Still, uh, is it still available? Yeah, it's definitely, so to give the answer, Noah, if you're watching this, Franz Serdar Lis Celom, 
Aleyküm selam. Hoş geldin. Welcome. And um, to answer this basically, um, it was never documented to be available. At least uh, it's currently not in the um, readme. So it's officially currently, it's obviously not supported. But maybe we can get it working pretty easily. But I'm not sure if we can. But I think I just had uh, had a look at the code. And um, let's have a detailed look at the files where they are mentioned. Where's the search? Let's do the search again. So we have, um, this is just forwarding the, the red thing, but this is the, the place where we're currently basically, okay, it's also just forwarding uh, things. It's just calling act on code. And it's just always passing false. So the code options actually, do they, do code options contain an option for that? All right, let's do that in, in the code itself. We are already here. And we can basically set the um, path here. Which I just can't edit, but on um, Serdar, okay, Dart Rider, Swift Driver in your room, the Firebase Le, the Macro Tracker, you will not see up them, and Jack chose she on the Iraq, you have some of the video done, is the Eric, can the project may go them. Put her shale in Montana, cover Iraq, can the can may have a big mix to your room, I'm a Neren, Neren, then Nassau Chalcha Jan, be mirror, and Erin Warm. Okay, so to translate the question, um, um, Franz Serdar is uh, learning SwiftUI for four months now and uh, wrote a macro tracker using Firebase and uh, basically learned it all by watching videos. And um, the question is basically how they can continue learning and is there any anything I can recommend? So um, my answer is I hope you're you I hope you understand English because I'm going to give the answer in English first. Um, if you don't understand, I can also additionally add in Turkish. But basically, what I can definitely recommend is hackingwithswift.com. Yes, perfect. Hackingwithswift.com um, has free courses. You just press uh, to learn here and then you have 100 days of Swift UI. Uh, if you're learning four months Swift UI already, maybe you already did this. If you didn't, um, this is definitely a course you can um, go through. And um, um, this is uh, done by Paul Hudson and he's teaching a lot of uh, different topics there. And I believe what's really important is that you um, first um, have a good resource, which is hackingwithswift.com for sure. Also, make sure to subscribe to, to some um, uh, iOS development um, um, newsletters like iOS Dev Weekly, for example. But there are a lot of them. There's also one uh, by um, Antoine Wonderly. Swift newsletter, I don't remember the name, but you can find it uh, easily. So also a lot of content to written by um, avenderly.com. So um, the newsletter, the reading articles will help you learn the newest things because there's always new things and you want to use the newest things if you're learning as a new, um, new as a beginner because there's not a lot of written things in books and videos that are new. And that's how you stay up to date with new things and always try to learn new things. Then um, I can recommend the course here, as I already mentioned, there's also um, if you like more university style, more more uh, proper things, you can also check out CS193P. Uh, so this was asked uh, many times. This is another thing I can recommend. I will check those resources. Thank you. I will start on Days of Swift from Hacking with Swift. Yeah, that's great. If you don't know that yet, I think that's one of the best things you can do. And it also explains how you, you should um, tackle it and how to learn. I think that that's one of the best resources to get started with. And then from there, you can continue by uh, reading articles regularly, for example, by subscribing to this or this newsletter, and there's more. And one more thing I can recommend is just uh, watch Apple's videos. Just go to apple.com slash WWDC and you'll find all their latest um, sessions. And just note, there are, there are a lot of advanced sessions, but there's also a lot of beginner sessions. And in general, um, I can recommend always checking out the sessions that start with something like um, what's new in. So everything that starts with what's new in, you can watch, for example, watch new app clips. You don't, you know, you're not interested in app clips and just skip it. What's new in app kit, not interested, skip it. But there is also what's new in. 
as of UI, what's new in Swift and things like that. Like for example, this one, watch this from this year and also from last year and also from years before. So that's how you can continue to learn after you have hacking with Swift through, because there's a lot of uh, things to learn here as well. And there's a lot of good tips there. You can also learn things about design and things like that. You can go just to topics. And that's what I would recommend. Those are, I think, great resources to learn. And from there, just write apps, just have like analyze your day. Look what what's something that you're missing, an app that you really need yourself. And then just write that app and just try to finish it so you can use it yourself. And then uh, start another app of something that you need. And just by writing apps and apps, you will learn. And at some point, you will become a good developer. That's how I started myself. All right. But uh, let's get back to answering the question. And I was just about to um, check the, the code here. And somehow I can't edit this. Anyways, I think we don't need it right now. Uh, let's check out the thank you for advice. You're welcome. Um, that's why I'm streaming. I'm always um, here. Feel free to ask questions. You can also ask questions about code. If I write something you don't know, just ask me. I'll explain. All right, but I want to open the, uh, what's the file name? I think we just want to search for all our comments here as well. So we have a strings file updater. Incrementally update keys and this has this option. So this strings files updater already has this option and does it use it. Yes, if override or override comments, then return new comments. Ah, I see. Okay. So it seems to be implemented um, in the logic itself. Let's see if everything is forwarded properly. So we have the command line action, interfaces code translate, command line actor accepts it. Does it use it? Uh, yes, it's uh, it forwards the um, option. That looks also good. And then we have it here. And this always sets it to false, so this does not forward. I'm, I'm expecting because this just doesn't have that option. So. I don't see override comments here. So basically the fix could be, and I'm seeing that we have different indentation here. The fix could be, we just add a new option, we just call it uh, override comments, make it a boolean. And then we should be able, because we have access to options here, we should be able to just say options dot override comments. And in theory, this should be it, I hope, but of course, <laughs> to know for sure, we need to check this and test it out. So let's check things in more detail. So if you want to create a new code, make um, a code options uh, project. So for example, when you initialize a new project with Party Crouch, uh, we use these things here. And I think we need to add this here as well. So let's, let's add that and let's use a Boolean one as an example. Let's just change everything that's this to override. Oh, let's copy and paste it in. It's always better to paste things in so you don't have typos. And it's within update code and the default is false. All right, looks good to me. No comma needed, it's the last entry. Then um, when we create, um, well, this is when we initialize an object of code options and we wanna create toml contents out of this. We wanna add this here as well. So let's make it override. Oh, let's copy again. Let's be sure that there's some typos. Um, default ignore keys. So we have defaults here. Oh, we don't need that. I believe we can here just use the current value, which is um, can we use a default value? Wait, what's this unstripped? Is this a self unstripped? Yeah, it's an extension, so it's the self. And obviously we need to say, and that's what I don't like, why, why I changed back to using self. So if this was just self, I would know this is a property and it's not a local variable. But I wanna change it. Um, if I change one place, I wanna change everything. So I'm just going to keep um, the things consistent within this project for now. So we're just going to say, all right, comments. So now, uh, when this is printed as a string to create a, a tumble file, it should work there as well. And this could be about it. 
Now we need to test it to uh, be sure that it actually works. Is there, and we should also document it. Yeah, that's something I forgot. Um, or that's in the readme file. I worked a lot in the last few days <laughs> and yeah, that's why my brain is kind of um, not working as fast as it used to. Uh, let's go here to the update. I think we want to go to normalize options, translate options, transform. There we go. So we have a new option here or an old option returning. Let's go override comments. Um, overrides the comment of a an entry always with the and just to check what what this is actually doing. Let's go back. So the new comment is set here, and it just uses um, the new translations comment. New comment contains any of ignores. So this is weird. Says new comment contains any of ignores. Ah, okay. If we want to, okay, okay. If the contain um, new comment contains something like body crush ignore, then we'll skip this. But if it doesn't, it just sets the new comment to um, this value. But it, it's only available inside of this, so no, that's not it. That's it. Okay, I was on the wrong line. So we're getting from the new translation the comment, and uh, if this is not nil, then we're setting it. Otherwise, we keep the old comment. And I was saying override with the comment in force update mode. There we go. We always make sure that we use the comment from a new translation. All right. All right. So it's basically um, setting translation as a comment. New translation is here. New translations. I believe this is mostly used for um, zip files, uh, strings files. So override comments, override comments, um, we're in the readme. Alright, it's a comment of an entry, always overrides. Alright, it's a comment with the one, uh, with the new, with the keys, new translation. Useful uh, for IB Fox. Do we have defaults here? No. All right. But I believe that's it. Now te let's test it. I'm just going to run it here. Use to run again. Why can't I not edit this? This is weird. Could it be because we need uh, an Xcode project for that? Yeah, it could be. That's weird. Why can I see this then? Does anyone know why I cannot edit this? Oh, this was for testing. That's my, no, that was the problem. All right, we can provide a path here. And I want to provide the path to the example project um, that was provided to us, which is this one here. And we're just going to make sure to add here the new option over a comma cave. This is already in there. That's true. Uh, now just, let's just make sure we have the correct path. So let me just, I don't know, get any file and just copy the path up to here because that's the directory we want to run it, run a uh, body crouch in. There we go. And now I'm just going to run this and we're just going to see what happens. All right, we have a problem here in loading the options. Why is this the case? 
Let me say load. We're loading from there. Configuration make toml. Contents file. All right. When we say. Uh huh. Yeah, we're not going to go in a break today. So let me actually turn off the countdown. Uh, I'll just uh, finish this up and then we'll we'll end the stream there. Make tunnel. Um, this is uh, um, update options, and we're calling a make function on there. So let's jump in there, and we can. Okay, this is where we are basically reading from the string and making a, an update update options from that string, and that's the place where we uh, where we missed updating things. So this is the translate options. This is the default tasks. And then here we're getting all these things and the thing that is missing. No, that's not, no, that's not what's missing. Update options has another code options make. That's the, that's the one that we need to do something about. And we can see here that we're setting override comments, which is the last one. And we're reading, reading the bool value from it. Otherwise we set it to false. What's wrong about this? I don't think it should fail. Hmm. Why is it crashing? All right, let's actually go into this, uh, into the make here. Now let's maybe let me rerun this. Just want to see if this part here is actually working. So if I run. Uh, let's actually go here. So if I run this code, what will happen? Uh, okay, this doesn't, this doesn't call properly. How else can we do that? Uh, do I have to write everything myself? All right, we need to copy things in from here. Uh, that's a bummer. Maybe we can go where this has been called, which is here. And we can just make the entire call here. Maybe we run this. And now we just say try code options make from Tomol. This does not fail, so this works. And it sets all right comments to true. So I believe that uh, this is not the place where which makes this fail. What else is making this fail then? Mm, yeah, update options. Version load, update options. Let's split this up. And again, the indentation is not adjusted yet. To um, just the load, which is uh, configuration. Try configuration load. Is this failing or is the update options failing? Here we just say configuration. So we know exactly which of these two is the problem. Okay, none of them. I really don't know what happened there, but now it's working. I think it's just, uh, it was just an access issue. You saw, you just saw that it asked me to access the, the folder and then now it works. All right, we have another problem now. We call fail if needed. Okay. Command execution current, execute. Doing all these things, it's returning. And then it's failing if needed. And in the failing if fail if needed, we say fail and warnings. All right, all right. Okay, this is because maybe we had a warning or something like that. But that really doesn't matter right now. Uh, what really matters is like the, the failure is on purpose. It, it fails to make sure that, for example, if you set this up as part of your um, continuous integration on the CI, 
then this failing will make sure that your CI fails and then you get an email, hey, something is not wrong with your translations. That's, that's um, like a uh, failing on purpose and it depends on your settings. So um, that really doesn't matter for this feature. But the real question is, do, do the um, keys update as expected? And for to, to know that, I have to actually add new keys. I'll just open this project now. And let's see if there are any um, zip files or something like that. UI sounds good. Toasts. There you go. This is a zip file, but this is a lot, doesn't look translated. Actually, let's use Remafox to uh, easily find the strings files because I don't know where they are. But with Remafox, I'm just going to skip the proper um, and, uh, configuration. I can just go to search paths here. And there we go. These are the strings files. So we have something here in new UI accessibility. And we have also license sheet. Mm, let's go to the main actually. So this is new UI. Everything is a new UI. So, oh, okay, this is and then main tab. There we go. All right, this main our storyboard is fine. This is actually localized. And we have the German one here. And what we want to do is check if um, I change, like you can see here, for example, it says in the base, which is just a storyboard file itself, that, uh, for example, this is niedrig, which is um, low. And the title here is also low in the original. And if you don't have override comments, now let's actually uh, replicate that as well by just opening this body crouch file. If we set it to false, like this, it should not change the comment if I change the value itself. So where do we have low here? Let's find it. There we go. This is the low option. And I'm just going to just change this text in um, the original here. And I think it should be here. There we go. We change it to, I don't know, um, below. Okay, so I changed it to below. I'm going to run body crouch now in the project. And it did run. And now let's have, have a look at this low. It says neatly here and it still stays at low here in the titles, in the comment of, of this value. So uh, let's turn this on now. And now I expect that um, the low comment changes to below when I run um, body crouch again. So let's run it again. And if everything works, then it should now stay below here, but it doesn't. So it still uh, seems not to work. Or are there multiple lows? Oh yeah, there are multiple lows and it changed to below. Okay, we, we didn't um, check the right thing, uh, but I can just change it manually back to low and we can turn it off again. And I can run it again. It also changed to below even with that turned off. Why? Yeah, okay. So I think, so let me actually commit the changes here or stash them at least. Let's just check them. There we go. Let's stash them. Um, add now, override comments, let's just call it like that. So I just revert to everything that we did now. I'm just going to test if this also worked, works now. So I'm just going to check the, the put this back at a low. And we're going to just go to our body crouch project and run it again with the, the version that is currently on the store. And now, is it changing to, yes, it's changing to below. Let's try another one. Let's go for help. Mm, 
Okay, this is just help. Uh, let's just make it helping. And let's run body crouch. Go back here. And it's changing to helping. So I think um, currently it's just always changing. So I don't know why, why the logic is like that. But whenever you change something in the storyboard files, it's always changing. So the override comments option isn't even needed. And I personally uh, would say that it makes sense to always update this with the original source, with the base base one, because that's what you're typically what you're looking at here is this, and then you want to find this helping thing here, and then that's that's the help the the, the com helping comment. So this should always update, and it is always updating. So I don't see a need for the override comments option here. The question, the real question is, why do they need that? And maybe I should just ask that question because I couldn't really, um, yeah, understand it. Option doesn't work. I can get the comments to change the model by file. If I first manually delete the comment from the strings file before running by the crush update. And they are, I think, talking about the zip files, etc. I think I'm signed in now by now, right? All right. So let's give an answer here. I know I just checked um, this in detail while live streaming. Let's add a link here so we can easily find it. So many tabs open, I should close some of them. Let's actually close everything else. All right, uh, while live streaming, I'll check this in detail while live streaming. And um, first, I actually implement, uh, turned on the currently disabled. That's link also things make things clear so for them to like fix things themselves override comments and it was anti active here line 21 I actually turned on the currently disabled option and implement it let's actually uh, maybe get this back Override comments, apply, and let me put this into a new branch. All right, comments. Re implement option. All right, comments for uh, code update. I just recognize it's for code update. It's not for interface builder update. Okay, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm just wrong. So they were not about uh, interface builder. The question is, why do we need it for code update? That, that's always confusing me. I think I'm, and that's not the first time somebody um, tells me that they want to over use that option. And I just don't understand why. Let's try to understand. Is there an NS localized string here? For example, this one here, trial counter expired. Let's see what the comment for it looks like. First draft, three days are over. Oh, they have the comment here. Ah, they want to change the comment in the code itself and they want the, the things to change there as well. All right, so let's test that. So we have it here in the German translation. First draft, three days are over and now Let's just change it to second draft. Or last. Let's make a last draft. Read this all over. Something weird. So we can definitely recognize that it's um, something I changed. And now we're going to run it with the option turned off. Let me do that. All 
All right. Let's see how things have changed. Um, this is the um, code for it. Now we want to go back to the localizable entry and it did not change. So this is still the old value. You can see first draft, not last draft. Now I'm going to turn it on and I'll see if it works now. Let's run it again. Last draft, RRR, it works. Nice, we implemented it. And I actually don't need a new feature, but maybe it's not that bad. No, we don't really need it. How do I go back? Stash and reapply. So we still have all the changes here. Just check them. This one actually is not really needed. Where is it? Yeah, let me just unstage that. Let's revert. This is just uh, bringing something that was uh, one line to two lines. This is actually important. Reimplement. There we go. And I also want to mention the, uh, the, uh, the task itself. So the comment here is unnecessary. And let's go to the issue. Fixes this issue. So what does, how does this say? Yeah, Swift format currently has problems and I have it turned on in the uh, project here as well. Let's fix that. And for that I need to go to the um, pre-commit hook. It runs build script, which has Swift format turned on. Let's turn that off. Turned off. Uh, due to Swift 5.7 update issue. Just to comment that as well. And now we should be able to commit. All right, we have another problem. It's saying code file search 54 for where violation. And we have the same in strings file updater. Let's start with this one. Uh, this is the wrong one. We don't need this project anymore. Oops. So it says basically that we have a for loop here and we're just making one if check and this can be shortened. Let me move this up. Let's set the indentation here back. And this can be shortened to just um, moving this if check into the where here, then we can remove the if here. This has exactly the same uh, effect. And we have it in one more, more place. It's strings file updater 548. There we go. Disable if as guard. Yeah, we will no longer have an if there. So this should also await. Uh, yeah. I was doing the wrong thing. So we want to do it like that. Where contains substring, and in that case, we just return true. And we probably no longer need this. All right. That was SwiftLint, by the way, that produced these things. And this is looking good. This is looking good. Let's continue. There we go. This is now implemented. And the question is, should we make a new release now? Uh, I think it depends, but why doesn't this update? This should actually update. There we go. Okay, let's do make a comment though. I just had a look at this in detail during my uh, live stream. Let's go. I should find a shortcut for that. And I um, re implemented the and documented the override comments configuration for the code update. 
uh, command. It should work as soon as I can make a new release. If you need it right now, you can try installing the main branch, e.g. by checking out and running make install. Currently there is an issue with homebrew and, and Xcode 14 or Swift 5.7. See here. Let's link on the issue as well. It's on GitHub uh, Homebrew. I believe it's just on the core. There we go. Not on issues, but on pull requests. We have Party Crouch. Release 4.12.1. And um, the issue, yeah, is, I think it's explained here. All right, I think that's about it. I'm not going to make a release now. I typically um, do that as well within the stream. Um, I do have a step-by-step -step, um, instructions for myself how to do that at the very bottom of my uh, readme file here. Um, but um, as I said, there is an issue currently with 5.7, so I can't make that. So um, let's end the stream then. Uh, basically, um, just to go through things because some people um, joined later that I did talk about at the beginning or the most important one actually, maybe that's that's the one that we really care about. And it's that basically my app Rima Fox is now ready to, re to be released. And the, its release is scheduled for October 11th. And if you just take a look at, and that's again, you're the first ones to know about that. People who are not watching this, they don't know yet. I'm going to um, make an announcement later, but um, the thing is that the app is already online. You can just press the Marimafox app here, and let me send this in the chat in the chat again. You can find the app on the Mac App Store. You can find the vi preview videos here. I'm not going to go through them again, but you can see basically here what the app is about, what it's doing. There's screenshots as well, explaining things. There's a description. And you can already um, pre-order it and you can then test it out for free um, in your project and use it and improve your localization workflow. So definitely make sure to check this out. And if you like it, don't forget also to um, add a, a positive rating. Um, it's going to really help me out because I'm an indie developer since the beginning of this year. That's also why I can make this live stream. And I want to continue being an independent developer, but currently I'm not making any money with any apps. This is my first app I'm releasing and I'm, hope, I'm hoping that it's going to actually uh, be successful. So if you spread the word, if you just use it, if you just give me feedback, there's also links in, in the app itself. So you can just go here into the help menu. You can report bugs, you can request new features. Uh, you can also see the roadmap. You can also click request new features and just have a look at um, if you just press um, issues here. Don't I have a button also? Bug reports and feature requests. So the very first button is just a, a place where you can find all the bug reports and feature requests that are just made. And you can actually um, vote yourself on the features. For example, if you say like, okay, I want to have a specialized strings file editor. So you can edit your strings files without having to go into text and things like you with a visual editor. I can build that, but if you want to have that, for example, just add a plus one here and I will make sure that I prioritize the ones that I have the highest numbers of likes. So give me feedback and also leave good ratings if you want to support me. But in any case, thank you very much for watching in this video. And I somehow skipped this entire thing. I think I'm just going to um, skip it for this stream because we just worked on one specific thing, which is this uh, one um, bug report that was made here somewhere that we just had open. But anyhow, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to check if anybody um, who's developing is streaming, then we're going to join them here on Twitch. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like this video right now down below. 
And um, again, I'm going to be in Japan for the next three months. I, I'll just be available for next week's stream. I'm probably going to stream there as well. But after that, I'm going to be in Japan for three months. And I can't promise if I'm be, if I will be able to stream there. I'm definitely going to um, produce some content from Japan as well. Also, developer content. I'm just going to try to upload it to my um, YouTube channel. So make sure to check out uh, the YouTube channel also. Um, to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want to see those kinds of content, there's also going to be some uh, guides for the Rainbow Fox app that explains it more and makes it really easy to use because I just explain it there in detail uh, on this channel as well. So definitely make sure to subscribe. Anyhow, that's it from this time. And I wish you all a great weekend, a great time. See you all next time. Bye.